If you were to give a newcomer into comics art uh, uh, one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, someone who wants to draw comics? Yeah. I would, ha I, would not, I would give them more than one piece of advice. Okay. There are two or three. One, I would tell them never draw from a comic book ever again. So many of us learn how to draw comic books from looking at other comic books. And I feel like we learn all the wrong lessons, particularly young people, because when young people copy, what they're copying is stuff on the surface. Um, they're copying technique. And I find, particularly with my students who are heavily influenced by manga and anime, I feel like they're getting all the surface and nothing underneath. None of the understructure, none of the storytelling. That, what they just like are the speed lines. And I find that incredibly disheartening and really hard to fix. Like One of the first things I do in my class is basically say, you cannot look at comic books anymore. I don't want to see it. I don't, like, you're here, you're going to be drawing from life, and that's all you're going to be doing. Um, so that would be number one rule. And you have that kid who brings in that page of perfectly copied Kirby and you go, no. I, I, I don't care because <laughs> another kid can perfectly copy Kirby. Yeah. Um, I, my, my George Perez influence is so strong it still lingers and I actually don't think that's necessarily a good thing. No, it yeah. took me a long time to unlearn a lot of my bad lessons. Sort of build your own style. But not even style, but learn how to draw. Learn how things really look as opposed to how they look in a comic book. Um, learn, th learn about the world around us, I, which would be rule number two. Um, reference, reference, reference. I think any good artist, any good writer, has to explore the world around them. They have to know how the world works. They have to know um, how, a, you know, what a car looks like in scale to a building, in scale to a person. They have to understand spatial relations. They have to understand infrastructure. Um, and they have to understand space and how we navigate in space. And they have to understand relationships between objects and people. Um, that's all storytelling is. Storytelling is all about relationships. Um, and I mean that in its broadest sense. It's about interpersonal relationships. It's about relationships in terms of distance. It's about relationships in terms of time and time passage. I implore um, young people to really be aware of the world around them, to never askew reference, to actually grasp for it, um, to work only from it when they can, particularly when they're young. Because once they're older, that stuff, muscle memory will kick in and they will be able to draw from their heads. But until they know what a horse looks like, really, they should never not have a picture of a horse with them. Yeah. They should never not be drawing from photographs or from, from reality. So that would be rule number two, reference everything. Also because the smarter you are, the smarter the storytelling, uh, smarter the storyteller, smarter designer you are, the better you are in a room, the more opportunities you have with an editor or a producer. You have, if you come with ideas, as opposed to just being um, sort of a, a lame guy that, or girl that can just draw pictures, like you are a thousand steps ahead of the people that cannot uh, learn how to tell a story in pictures. So many young people come to me with portfolios that are all splash pages. And I look through these portfolios, I'm like, Where, where's the dinner scene? Where's the scene of two people hanging out in the park? Where's the scene of, just even if characters are flying but not fighting, um, where's the cityscape? Most editors are looking for um, a sense that people can tell a story sequentially. It's not always valued, and not always valued in the way it should should be. But generally, a really good editor, a really strong editor, is not only going to look for someone who can draw a, a kick-ass Wolverine or an unbelievably awesome Batman, but they're going to look at the way they put them in their environments and tell stories with those characters in those environments. So I would tell any young person, start studying film. If you're going to look at comics, don't look at them for the art, look at them for the story. Pick the wisest and the best um, storytelling masters. You know, consensus may or may not tell us who those are, but learn how to tell story and pictures. Stop drawing splash pages, start going into sequential art. Those would be, I think, my top three rules. Great, and uh, finally, uh, what is next? Oh Broad my gosh, question. what is next? Um, that's a great question. I'm hoping to do more Ferris because I had a really wonderful time working on that book. Um, my contract's up in a couple of months at DC. Your exclusive. My exclusive. Yeah, exclusive is contract. Up. Um, and it's been a really kind of nice couple of years. Um, 
I'm pursuing some work, as we all are, out in California. I'd like to do some cartoons. Um, I've been thinking a lot for the first time ever about some autobiographical stuff, but figuring out how to distribute it cheaply and, you know, I think a lot of people just want to see me on superheroes, but I some events the past several months have occurred and I'm just thinking, uh, I'd like to, I was thinking about writing a novel about them, I think, well, maybe I should write like a graphic novel. Yeah. Maybe I should sort of tell a personal story and see if it connects with people. So I was joking with my editor today, it's like, I've got the title, I know what it's going to be and it's going to be about this stuff and he was very excited about it. So. Um, I'll be around in the mainstream world for a while, I'm good there, but I'm hoping to do some animated stuff, some TV stuff, and then perhaps this new little project. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and let me just wrap up with our lightning round. Oh my god, a lightning round. Five okay. questions we ask every guest here on the Ansible. You didn't tell me about this. Even though this no, is I'm our nervous. first ever. No. Okay. Here we go. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, um, uh, alpha level telekinesis. Awesome. Like omega level telekinesis, excuse me, sorry. There you go. Okay. Get your Marvel stuff, yes. right? Yes, right, 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 right. Sorry. Uh, are you a Doctor Who fan? I'm not. Okay. Uh, as far as stars go, Trek, Wars, or Gate? Oh, wars, but four, five, and six. Yeah, of course. Okay. There, Just making sure. There were no other ones, don't right, worry about okay. it. Okay. Uh, what's your drink of choice? Oh, strawberry margarita, frozen, no salt. Nice. Anything with an umbrella, this is how gay I am. Like, if, it, if it's pink <laughs> and there's an umbrella in it, I'm the happiest boy in the world. I'm not really a tequila guy, so margaritas don't really work for oh, me. Oh, i thrilled out of my mind. You'll get more <laughs> dark secrets out of me if you just pass me a strawberry margarita. Nope. With an future. umbrella. Okay. Oh, of course. I have to or go some, buy some like, umbrellas. Uh, <laughs> you get to hang out with any comic book character for a day. Who do you pick? Uh, toss it between Wonder Woman and Donna Troy. Okay. Maybe you can just have like both. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'll allow it. The two sisters. Uh, Phil Jimenez, thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, I'm Mike Nixon, and I'll see you next time on the Ansible.